I guess the Mariska is on there too. Hi, Mariska. All right, stand by. Okay, we're ready. This meeting is called to order. It is a special called meeting of the Fulton County Board of Registration and Elections for uh, April the 23rd. I'm Mary Carol Cooney, chairperson, and I'm joined this morning by my colleagues, Mr. Mark Wingate, Ms. Vernetta Keith Nuredin, Dr. Kathleen Ruth, and Mr. Aaron Johnson. Um, this is a teleconference meeting authorized as a teleconference pursuant to section 50-14-1G of the official code of Georgia because of the statewide and countywide public health emergency which resulted in the closure of public buildings due to the coronavirus and because means have been afforded for the public to have simultaneous access to our video conference. So since we are here with, we are here legally, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please look at your agenda and let me know if you have any additions or corrections. Otherwise, I will take a motion. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. And properly moved and seconded to approve the agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Let the record show that that was unanimous. Uh, the second thing on our agenda is communications and responses from the public. Uh, Mr. Dollar or Mr. Reese, are there any members of the public who wish to be heard? Yes, there are. We have uh, uh, Eileen Nukamura, Miss uh, Nukamura. Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, you can go ahead now. Hi. Um, my remarks are going to be very short today. Um, I just first I wanted to offer my sincere condolences um, for the loss of Beverly Walker. I also lost my aunt last week, and I know how difficult it is to um, lose a family member um, during this crisis that we're having. Um, I also wanted to just thank Director Barron for all of the work that he is doing because uh, the, I, I can just imagine the daily, the, I think the word is deluge, yeah, of, um, of mail ballot applications that are coming in and um, the work that has to be done in order to sort them out and send out the ballots um, to all of the voters. And that is something that none of the counties um, have had the experience of, of doing at this scale. So um, I think that it's it's just an enormous amount of work with a very small staff um, and especially with uh, the coronavirus going around, it's a very, very hard task to do. So I just wanted to thank him and, and the whole staff for um, all of the work that they're doing. Um, and the other ask that I have is for all of the board members to please read the um, email that I sent yesterday. Um, and that's, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Nakamura. Uh, any other members of the public wishing to be heard? We have um, someone on the phone at 183. Hello. Oh, that, I, I believe that's Brenda McLeod on the okay. staff. No, that's that's not. Oh, okay. That's not Miss McLeod. She's Dave our Hunt. panelist. Dave Someone Hunt. at four zero four seven seven one. That's yeah. Cheryl Ringer. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. That's a lawyer. We can move okay. on. Um, we have Ben Russell. Mr. Russell. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I work with a, uh, a voter engagement group, and we have been um, trying to get inactive voters to um, uh, make their uh, update their 
registration, so it's active, and we have not been able to get through um, the number. We have re reached the 7020 number, uh, but we have not gotten the 3816 number, and um, so we're kind of stymied because we're asking people to call the registration department, but there's no one um, taking their calls. Thank you, Mr. Russell. I think that uh, once we are done with public communications, we'll be able to address your concern. Uh, anyone else? And Reginald McClendon. Brenda McClendon is on our staff. We no. Are the city of Atlanta. The city of Atlanta. And uh, Benita Epps, is that on staff? I don't think so. Ms. Epps? You have to unmute Ms. Epps. Yeah, I'm unmuting, but it's not allowing it to unmute. It's continually muted. She, yeah, I think she has two on her end, right? All right. Hmm. She does not unmute. Okay, I think that's it then. I don't see. It's unmuted now. Ms. Epps? Hi, good morning. Good morning. Just here, um, excited to hear about what plans we have going forward for um, securing the vote here in Fulton County. And um, my concern is just this. I'm looking forward to hearing what plans have been made to secure ballots at the precinct for those who may want to submit their paper ballots in a face-to-face -face fashion, or those who would like to relinquish their paper ballots to vote in person on June 9th. Um, I've heard some speculations about putting in um, collection boxes and wanted to get clarification as to whether or not that would occur beforehand at um, specified locations, as in the North Annex, South Annex, um, Federal um, um, Fulton County Government Center, or whether that's going to occur on Election Day. So just help me help us understand when and where we can actually deliver our paper voted ballots. All right, thank you, Ms. Epps. Um, do we have anyone else from the public who wishes to be heard? We got a Virginia Brown. Brown. There is this Re Regina Waller. A Brown. We have a Re Regina Brown. Brown. Okay. Ms. Brown. Unmute yourself, Ms. Brown. She's no longer there. Okay, well. Uh, we I have a Linda Pritchard also. All right, uh, Ms. Pritchard. Uh, good morning. Can you hear me? We can. Okay, good morning. Um, uh, this is Linda Pritchett, and uh, my comment is surrounding um, voter education. Um, as many of you may know, I am a candidate for state senate um, on this ballot, and I've been speaking to a lot of the voters, and a lot of them are still under the misconception that uh, that there's only one election. Uh, they're telling me that they have already early voted. So they, a lot of people have been throwing away their absentee ballot applications that they've received in the mail. Um, so I've tried, you know, my best to um, make sure that people understand that the two separate um, elections have been combined. But I think um, that we have a lot of voters that are simply throwing away you know, their applications and um, they won't be able to exercise their option to vote by mail. So I just wondered um, what efforts 
um, you all are making to make sure that it's clear that this will be the combination uh, election and that people should exercise their option to vote by mail in, in an abundance of caution. And, and that's pretty much my comment. But thank you so much for all the hard work that you all have put into this process. I've, been, I've become very impressed <clears throat> and I'm very thankful for all that you do uh, to make sure that the voters have all the resources that they need to be able to exercise their right to vote. Thank you, Ms. Pritchett. Um, I understand that uh, Joe Karn is here and may wish to speak. Is that correct? No, just listening. Uh, okay. Hope everybody's well. Thank you. We appreciate that. Um, and uh, Forrest Webb, who is the municipal elections uh, superintendent and municipal clerk, is here. But um, there uh, is a point or even two points where he may wish to address specific uh, issues. And he will be welcome at that time. But you are also welcome to speak as a citizen. Do you want to speak now? And I am not hearing him. So I assume that we will hear him about matters uh, pertaining to the city of Atlanta. All right. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Yes. It's, he's coming on. Oh, OK. Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, again, my name is Forrest Webb the third City of Atlanta Municipal Clerk and Election Superintendent uh, for the City of Atlanta. Just wanted to advise the board that I received confirmation this morning that the um, regular voting precincts um, within the city of Atlanta that are designated as recreation facilities are available uh, for usage for the June 9th election and early voting itself. Uh, I also wanted to make very clear for the record that the city of Atlanta is still currently under the mayor, Mayor Bottoms executive order that uh, we are not open uh, and all citizens are requested to still shelter in place. And subsequently, the usage of the facilities uh, for the election does not suggest that the city of Atlanta will be open at that time. However, this has been deemed an emergency uh, accommodation. So subsequently, we will be accommodating the Board of Registration and Election when it came to the usage of the facilities. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Webb, and, and thank you for your efforts uh, uh, to get this uh, to be to be able to provide places to vote for our voters. Uh, now, it, uh, is there anyone else who wishes to be heard? And hearing none, then I believe that takes care of item number two. Thank you to our uh, external affairs staff and Ms. Bodison. Uh, item number three, is uh, Mr. Jones available? Um, let me see. Uh, Most of that, hold on. Um, we, can, we can defer that and move on. Let me... I see a phone number on there, but I'm not sure. That's not Mr. Jones' phone number. Okay, uh, well, if you can get on via phone, that's fine. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah.
He's had to get in by phone. He's getting on right now. Okay, so we will yeah. wait for him. Mary Carol. Mr. Wingate, yes. Uh, I lost out. My internet uh, blew away. Um, well, oh, I'm back on my phone again. You're back. Okay, well, actually, we see you and we, we hear you. I think we all do. Okay. So don't move, but we're, we're getting you. out of the way I keep putting it over the camera Madam Chair? Yes, ma'am. Um, are we able to go ahead and prove, approve our cal calendar while we wait, item number six? Or uh, I'm just trying to see if we can finish, we skip ahead and finish the things. Done. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Bodison? Yes, ma'am. Is um, anything preventing us from uh, uh, taking item number six out of turn? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, uh, we are going, uh, I will assume that uh, all board members, I have the concurrence of all board members to delay items three, four, and five for a few minutes, am I correct? And yes. Hearing no objection, uh, let's move on to item six, which is uh, an approval of the remainder of our 2020 calendar. Um, uh, I uh, noted that um, we have some changes as to how we certify and um, uh, that we have, we now certify on or before the second Friday after the election, which is quite later uh, than usual. Uh, let me ask Mr. Blake, if I may, the last, the last day on which we could certify is that second Friday following the election. Is that the best day for the staff? Are, are we um, giving you enough time to get those certified results over to the, to the Secretary of State? Yes, I, I, I think that would, be, that would be time for us to be able to do what we need to do on our end. Okay. Any other questions or comments about um, our calendar? Madam Chair, I had one comment. Yes. But the board, 
Um, if you look at that second sheet, November the 12th and the 13th, you have a regular board meeting. You all, and so that next day you'll come back again. Um, I want the board to consider maybe co uh, combining the meeting so you're not having a Thursday and a Friday meeting. Right, and this would be certifying the results of the presidential and other uh, federal elections. At your regular meeting, yes ma'am. Right, um, and if there is, that does not pose an inconvenience to staff, I think it might be actually a convenience. Mr. Barron, any reason for us not to do that? Uh, no. Okay. Then um, uh, does someone, well, well, we will, then I propose that we approve this amended schedule or our new schedule striking November 13th and adding to November 12th a reg regular plus certification of election results meeting. Is that acceptable to everybody? Yes. Second. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 All, right. uh, all opposed. Once again, I will have this recorded as unanimous and keep this for your calendars. Mr. Barron, do you have a report for us? First of all, on, on whether uh, we can speak to Mr. Jones. He um, he was he's in the uh, in his office actually, and he's um, he tried to get on via phone, and he put in the pen. It didn't work, and then so I told him to use his Apple phone to get on Zoom that way. And the last that I heard before our phone got cut off was that he was putting in his email address to register on the webinar. But I don't I don't know what happened. Okay. Rick, Rick, is anyone in the building where he is? I don't think so. I think he's, well, there's, I mean, there's some other people there doing ballot by mail, but. Um, we can do, it seems to me, one of uh, several things. One of them is to take up item number five. I can, I can do mo, I mean, I, I can do most of item number three, which is the update on ballot by mail applications, if you want. That's item number four. That's number four. Or number four. Okay. Uh, if you feel that you can, um, why don't you give us that update? Okay. So we, through yesterday, we've processed or we've opened 51,688 absentee ballot applications. We have entered 10,116 of those by paper. We had also entered, I believe it was another 433 we had entered that were electronic applications. Now we have another, um, we have a total of about 113,000 applications about 80,000 of those are paper uh, total, that which includes the numbers that I gave you earlier. We have about another uh, 20,000 that came to one of the email boxes. We had another 2,000 that came to another email address, and then about 1,000 came in by fax. So we have about 113,000 applications total. And as I said earlier, about 50, almost 52,000 of those we've opened. We anticipate being completed, opening those applications tomorrow. And then we will, uh, Ralph and Karen estimate that we will be caught up entering everything that we've received through yesterday by Wednesday of next week. The state started mailing out those applications yet, uh, or start mailing out the ballots through their third party vendor run back on the 21st. So some of those, and I believe those are being mailed from Arizona. So, but I, 
uh, so I would imagine that some of the ballots are going to start hitting mailboxes, um, you know, today through Monday, I would imagine. With regard to the drop boxes, we are, uh, we've, we've seen wait, 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 uh, hang on a minute. Okay. I, I think I'm doubled up here. Sorry. Yes, you oh, are. Yeah. But you don't get two votes. Well, the internet came back. How do I get rid of this? Hang on, hang on. Mark Sorry. Bombing us. Let me. Let me can I? I, 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 I uh, the second one. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. I am. I get on here. How do I get out of here? Sorry. Just turn your phone off, Mark. Okay. We've got you just once. Okay, there it is. Um, okay, with regard to the drop boxes, we are surveying the uh, the libraries to see which ones already have cameras for surveillance because we have to have surveillance. All the new libraries, from what I understand, have this. So we are waiting the list to see how many of these that we can order. We have a quote for 12 right now. Um, they're, they're going to be a fairly significant expense because they're about $2,000 each. Once we get that final list from the, the library department, uh, which ones have the, the necessary surveillance, we will begin to, um, we will know how many that we can actually have. The South Annex doesn't have the surveillance cameras that we need, so we'll, we'll use the Government Center and the North Annex in addition to whichever libraries that we choose, but we're gonna stick to county facilities. Uh, it'll just be easier. The SEB only approved these drop boxes for this election. It doesn't seem like from what I've read on there that they approved them for the runoff and for November. So we're gonna to have to install these by drilling into the concrete at the libraries. For one election with no guarantee, we'll be able to keep them there. I mean, I, I would imagine we'll probably use them through the end of the year, but we don't know at this point. So we, we should be able to get them ordered and, and in place soon. <laughs> uh, the items are in stock, but we don't have a list of of those those locations yet. Questions? Oh, is, is, is that all you have to say? Yes. Uh, well, and I, I guess, you know, we, we had to get the department, uh, we received the bulk of those applications the day before Good Friday, which was the same day that Beverly Walker passed away. So most of this, the voter registration absentee staff did not work on, on the Good Friday. And then the following Thursday and Friday, our offices were closed uh, downtown because to get the everything decontaminated. So we've lost, we lost three days in there of processing um, as, it, as it stands, which is one of the reasons we don't have all of the applications opened and probably, I don't know, most of the 80,000 ballots that ballot by mail applications that we received, the bulk of them we received the day before Good Friday. You said the following week, well, that's this week. Last week we had, last Thursday and Friday, we were unable to go into the office because the, we had the offices, the dream, um, have used their contractor and when they de decontaminated our offices. I do have a, just a couple of questions if you're done, sir. Sure. So the 80,000 that was, you had the 80,000, so you did have some, I guess 24,000 was the last number you had at our last meeting. Were those able to get processed to, 
to be in that first um, shipment of ballots on the on Tuesday twenty first. We have ten. Uh, was it ten thousand one hundred and sixteen that we've yeah. processed, and then we have another four hundred and thirty three electronic applications that we've processed. So those those should be mailed. Uh, so and that there, would be there were there were twenty three hundred email applications there's that were about emailed. That, there's about 23,000 email and faxed applications. Right. Were, were the email applications able to be processed? Is there is there a way in which you guys are doing this? So we'll make sure that the folks who sent them in first will be receiving theirs first. 433 of those have been processed. 433 of 23,000? Yeah. And then, and the other ten thousand one hundred and sixteen are are the mailed applications. Also, you sent an email saying that Mr. Anderson was going to give you guys staff to help with entering the request. Mm -hmm. Has that happened? Yes. Yeah. We um, beginning on Monday, we we have um, staff from the tax commissioner's office and also the tax assessor's office helping us. We have about 30 individuals and everyone's spread out through the atrium at the government center. They are, they're tasked right now with opening all of the mail, which we anticipate finishing tomorrow. And the surveillance cameras that you require for the drop boxes, uh, are they monitored? Yes. Not yet. IT monitors those, or the library department. They monitor them, or they are. Or, well, no. The from what I from what Ralph learned yesterday, I think speaking to the gentleman who uh, is that one of them. They, I think they take pictures every ten seconds. Okay, so because you're requiring that they have surveillance, and if they're not monitored, the SEB, yeah, there it's required that it that they're monitored. That it has that it has 24 hour monitored surveillance or a camera surveillance. Either either one of them is fine. Okay. As as it, you know it's very they're the, two different things. They're totally Well, different. I think what the what the regulate what the SEB rule said is that as long as there's a picture taken, I believe it was every minute. But these are like every 10 seconds a picture's taken. Okay. And is there any information on voter registration, the number of applications that you've received and the, the status on the update for those? We're only a day, I think a day behind right now. We had uh, a couple of days ago, we had around 4,000 paper DDS and online applications to process. Okay, I just, if, if you don't mind, sir, I would rather that information just be written down so we'll know it. And I know you guys are doing a great job about keeping us up to date. I don't recall seeing anything about the voter registration information, and but maybe no, I hadn't, I hadn't sent anything. We're we're basically we we have a team that's entering those, so we're we're caught up on those. I mean, basically, we we're we're entering the the number that we're behind is basically what's coming in the day before with regard to DDS. So we're as caught up as, as we can get with DDS and the online and whichever paper applications come in. If you would, you, if you would provide a report on that, an update on that. And, um, and um, so are, are you saying that Mr. Jones will not be on the call this, this morning? Uh, as far as I know, he's trying to get on. Okay, and then finally, finally, is it safe for him to be in the county with employees? Is that is he, cleared? You know, he he was waiting. Once the doctor cleared him, he could go in. So he, he's he's definitely been cleared to return to work. Yeah, he went he went in. Um, he went into the doctor on Monday. Okay. Good. I, I just I, I asked that because I know he's living with a, a active COVID patient. So at least I, he's re been. She's recovered. Okay. 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 That's it for me. All right, other board members. Yeah, uh, one quick question on the Dropbox issue that um, went through my mind. The 24 seven surveillance is one thing, but it, I don't believe that we're going to have 
at any point in time, any of those locations, whatever they turn out to be, would have an actual person that would be attending? Well, uh, we're going to have to look at, uh, I think once we get, uh, especially on election day, we are going to probably have to have people at those locations. Right. Because, and we, we have to pick up the ballots daily from all those locations. So we have to get a team that's going to go around and, and uh, empty those boxes every day once they're installed. The other thing is that, uh, but on election day, we're probably going to have to empty those multiple times. So we're going to have to either um, have a, ro a few roving teams that go around and empty them periodically throughout the day, or, or we're just gonna have to have teams there that will monitor those. But uh, we're still, we're, I think once we, once we find out all of the, and, and we'll be able to get staff, um, you know, the county's real supportive with whatever we need right now, and they have plenty of staff that they can, they can provide. Okay. Have you, Rick, in your experience, have, it, it would seem like that, I think, uh, hopefully it's never happened, but somebody who wanted to uh, destroy ballots, is, is it possible somebody could come in there and do something simply as pour a Coke in there? I mean, is there access to that where somebody could in fact do something to whatever might be in one of those boxes at any given point in time that would actually serve to destroy what's in there? Hey Blake, have, have, uh, you've you've been looking at those uh, those boxes, right? Do you do you have any information that would be able to answer Mark's questions? I mean, they look like to me they look like pretty pretty sturdy pieces of 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 hardware that um, and and I know these are used by other states that that use ballot by mail on a regular basis. Okay. That was, we, we have been getting quotes based on the recommendations that uh, Mr. Jones made to us. Um, the, the company was recommended to us by another jurisdiction here in Georgia. So, um, and, and my, you know, obviously that, that concern has ran through my mind, uh, but as, as Director Barron said, um, other jurisdictions do similar, similar uh, things. And so um, I've, I wouldn't lose confidence in in this working too much. Like what uh, what company, if you can tell us, uh, is being considered for those devices? Mm. I can tell you. Yeah, and the tw I, I don't know. Um, if I, is the the twelve. The quote that we have right now for 12 of them is about $24,000. And I, I'm not sure if that included shipping. American security cabinets. American security cabinets. Okay. Thank you. And, um, hey, I'm sorry. Wait, 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 we've got another yeah. question. Let me raise my hand. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Right. We, we have another question uh, in, from Dr. Ruth. Is there a picture available of those boxes? Yes, we can get, um, Blake, do you have, do you have um, in the quote, does it show those boxes or do you have any literature you can send to the board? I can send uh, what was sent to us and also a link to the website. Okay. okay, we'll get that to you. Mr. Johnson, do you have a question? Yes, I do, thank you. The screen popped away. Uh, Mr. Barron, a couple things. On the, we were talking about the number of absentee ballots processed. How long does it take for somebody to learn whether or not their ballot has been processed? And I'm gonna preface it with a couple of questions that I got is people are sending or emailing or however they're sending their application in and they're kind of nervous. They don't get a response like a thank you for sending your email or anything like that. Yeah, but, and, but then they just want to. They hold on. They just want to know how long does the process take for once that application gets to the office? When can they get some type of notification? Number one, that it was received, and two, whether or not it was processed. Uh, 
and it looks like Rick froze. It it looks yes. Um, Rick has definitely frozen. Blake, are you frozen? I am not frozen, but I would I would rather Mr. Jones or Director right. Barron answer that question. Okay. Okay, and Rick is so, Mr. Johnson, can you um, hold that and see? We can see uh, if uh, we, now we lost Mr. Barron altogether. Um, probably got froze out like I did. Yeah. Uh, let me see. It this may or may not be the time to talk about. Um, inactive voters wanting to get on our active list, which is something that Ms. Bodison and I dealt with perhaps just yesterday. Um, if you will unmute, there is an answer. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you give it to us or will you, <laughs> will you trust me? Which is that if you are an inactive voter, you are a voter and you don't have to do anything to change your status so that you can vote. You just go in and vote. And you should check, uh, you should check the My Voter page, uh, but even if you are an inactive voter, you should be there. I hope that's um, helpful. Um, let me see. We have still lost Mr. Barron. I, would, I just... Yes. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, Go ahead. I, I just spoke with uh, Director Barron. Uh, he has lost power at his house, so he is in the process of joining by phone. Wow. Okay. Um, uh, then well, let us, all right, there are a couple of things that we can do. Let me ask Mr. Evans if you are comfortable with presenting item number five, perfectly acceptable if you are not, but um, the approval of early voting locations. Can we have that discussion now? Yes, we, we can move forward with that. Okay, we are having somebody phone in. I don't know who it is. It is- Madam Chair. Yes. Ms. Mr. Jones, just- Hold on. Mr. Jones. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yes. We are so glad that you can join us. We haven't spoken to you since um, you battled the beast and won. Hey, brother. And we're grateful for your presence one way or another. Um, yes, yeah, thanks for the lateness of the call. We've just been trying to get on. Right. <laughs> We appreciate that. We appreciate your persistence in in doing so. Um, and it, it certainly seemed uh, it, it was evident that you are the appropriate person to allow us to uh, appreciate Mrs. Beverly Walker. Can you speak to her, please, or of her? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, the board, for allowing us to take this opportunity um, to um, talk about Ms. Walker. Um, Ms. Walker began to work for us, and she worked 15 years uh, in our department and retired in 2012. Um, she was an excellent worker. We would call Ms. Walker, what we call Ms. Walker a type of worker, was a plug and play worker. What do we mean by plug and play? She could do it all in registration. Registration has many functions. And Ms. Walker was able to do every function in registration. In fact, when I had come over here from the state, um, the person who showed me all the procedures for registration was Ms. Walker. Um, but her gift was, was always her smile and her presence. She never met um, a stranger and she always had a smile on her face. 
one of the greatest gifts was her giving. Um, I can still remember the sweet potato pies and um, salmon croquettes that she would fix for the office. But finally, I just wanted to say that um, Miss Walker was a friend and she was one who would dedicate giving and dedicate to love this office. Even though she retired in 2012, she came back to work from um, 2013 until just March um, 23rd. So we are very, very indebted to Ms. Walker and all the things that she has contributed to our department. Not only the work, but just her presence that made the office glow and be an effective office to work in. So thank you. Mr. Um, she, uh, let me say this. Her um, viewing, it will be held um, on tomorrow. Um, it's going to be held at 11 o'clock on tomorrow. And you can view it by uh, Facebook. And we will um, reach out to anybody who wants to know the details of it, okay? Um, and we will reach out to them to let them know. Thank you so much for that information, Chief Jones, and for that beautiful tribute to her. Thank you, Mr. Jones. And um, uh, let me add that this whole business of um, having a pandemic and having our public uh, meetings and public functions compromised have made this board appreciate so much dedicated staff. And this lady, by all accounts, was the most dedicated. And I, I know I speak for all of us when I say she will really. And thank you. Um, Mr. Barron. Yes. I, uh, I, let me see. I am uncertain whether we have done as much as we can with um, item number four. Let me ask board member if, if board members if they have Miss Dr. Ruth. Do you have a question? Yes, I wanted to go back, Dr. Mr. Barron, about the surveillance tapes or surveillance of the Dropbox, and can you talk a little bit about um, how they will be reviewed? Um, will there be someone that will be reviewing them on a regular basis, how, the, how they would be monitored? Well, I think, Ralph, did you talk, you talked to the gentleman either with the library department yesterday, is that right? That is correct. I can, I can, they are, they are monitored 24 hours. It's just that they take pictures and they have multiple cameras. And um, so they have several cameras at the library. So every camera gets a picture. And um, the ones that we would want are obviously the ones that are outside. And that picture comes around every 10 seconds. Now, if there is a circumstance at the library that um, they can override that and they can stay on one picture, just to monitor it. And that's good because if that happens, then after that, um, I'm assuming it's gonna be outside where our, where our device is. So um, they are getting us a list of libraries that actually have this feature. We're waiting on that list and they told me they should be getting it to me this week. So as soon as we get the list, we can then um, start planning on what would be the best places for us to put those boxes um, and for people to drop off their ballots. Okay, and then I have a, a second, a follow-up question, is when mm -hmm. um, they are picked up, what's the security process for uh, picking up the ballots? I know that Mr. Barron yeah. mentioned that there would be multiple pickups, but what's the security? Okay, what, what would happen is that um, by law that they made, um, we will have two people 
um, assigned to pick up every day. Um, they will separate them. There will be a change of custody. They will bring those ballots to our office um, and have a chain of custody again. And that, from that aspect, we, we will have um, separate counts for each um, location that we have to validate that we got the number of applications um, from that point on. But the way the rule reads is that we have to have two people to be able to pick up the um, ballots and then they will be transported directly to our office at the registration. Okay. Um, questions, Mr. Johnson, any? Yes. Uh, good morning. Uh, one quick question about the process once the ballots, the applications, I'm sorry, are received. Uh, and I don't know if Rick heard the question earlier but basically when somebody sends in their application via email or however, uh, one of the questions that I consistently get is how do we know it's there? So can you let us know, is there a process for letting someone know that it's been received? Because from my understanding, you don't get a bounce back email that says, thank you for your application or anything like that. So how does a person know that it's received and or how long does it, sh before it'll show up on my voter page that they can look and see? Great question. Um, at this present time, you don't get a um, receipt response. Um, our IT department is in the process of looking at that situation to see if they can find a way how to get that to happen. Our email that is being sent to is a group email, and usually all you have to do is say um, receipt response, but they don't have a receipt response for a group email. So they're trying to work through that one. Um, usually, if, if Ralph, a person. Uh, Ralph, is it true the only people that actually get a confirmation are the ones that fax, correct? That is correct. The fax people get a confirmation because it's set up to say that your fax is good and what have you. So the people who are emailing it to the um, two emails that we have receiving at this particular time will not at this time get a confirmation. Okay. Now, your second... Oh, go ahead. Can you talk about by, by the time Wednesday rolls around, we should have all of the applications that we have now processed and there and and at that point people will be able to see on the mvp my voter correct page that, that we have them yeah that is correct at this present time we were just running a little behind so what we're going to do is that we're going to go ahead and process the applications so that if a person emails us um, by um, Thursday of next week, they should be able to see their um, their response on the My Voter page that the ballot will go out and when the ballot, when we receive it and when the ballot will go out. It shouldn't be no more than the two-day turnaround by next Thursday at that particular time. So we're in the process now, since we got through opening up all of our mail, um, we're in the process now begin to process in the mail. And now the staff have full stacks to enter, which they have started and begun. And also just for clarity, the mm -hmm. um, there's a new date for voter registration. And I got dropped, so I hope I didn't miss that part, but there's a new date for voter registration for this June 9th election, correct? That is correct, it's May 11th. It's a new voter registration deadline. And Ralph, can you also, since you're on now, can you have Pam send the DDS dashboard figures to the board? Uh, Vernetta requested that earlier. Thank you. When you before okay. You were on. Okay, we can do that. We uh, have them sent right now. Um, you want the number of DDS applications and DDS the number online. of and DDS online, and I don't know if you have. Hey. If you count the paper apps every day, but or or just the, the yeah, estimate, we'll, like gray. 
Sure, sure, we can do that. We can do that, and we'll email it now. Okay. All right, and one last question, and this may mm -hmm. be more for uh, Director Barron. Do we have any materials via electronic or however that kind of explains the process for people? Uh, I know it's been ever changing, but now that we think we're close to a uh, solidified, we're actually going to vote on June the 9th. We're going to have these uh, vote boxes. Do we have any materials that we can get out to people to let them know this is the process, this is how it's going to go? Yeah, well, we, we have a frequently asked questions that we were we were finalizing to get put on to the the website. And I think once we get these, we will um, make sure we get those those up. And in addition to that, then we'll add the locations for the drop boxes once we get those on too. We were what different staff were adding key questions to the frequently asked questions so we could get those posted. Okay. Hey, and Mr. Barron, also that um, Ms. Jessica suggested that we do a little video about the absence process um, just to, so that people can be familiar with it. And since this is their first time, so if they have any questions, that they will have a little video for them, a video presentation that they can click on to to explain um, the absentee process by mail also. Okay. Okay. That's a great idea. It is awesome. Mr. Wingate, any questions? No, I'm fine. Thank okay. you. Uh, Ms. Newridden, you Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Jones, I had a question. I know the department is manually issuing the, the issue date for those absentee ballots. Will Rundeck, will Rundeck then update the voter through my voter page on when it's going to actually be issued since it's not being issued through the department? I know you're going to put in the issue date whenever you put it in, correct? That is correct, but the issue date is the same date as the mailing date for run day. So whatever date that we have as the issue date will be the mailing date for run day also. Um, so whatever date we tell run day that we want them to issue the ballot, that's the same day that it's going to be mailed from run day. Okay, so I wasn't sure since, you know, this is the first time that one vendor has been used for the entire state and this process is kind of, you know, um, changed with the pandemic. I guess my concern is if they receive 100,000, is it reasonable to believe that they will be able to send that many out you know, that same day? Is that a reasonable assumption that we can make? That's what the Secretary of State told us. Right? Okay. So we're, we're gonna go about what the Secretary of State told us. Okay. that the day that we issue is the same day that they're going to mail it. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Johnson. Oh, I have one last question. I forgot. I'm sorry. Can we speak to, there's been an AJC article that talks about ballots and how if you just stick your ballot in the mailbox, it will automatically get uh, delivered. Is that true? I haven't gotten confirmation that is absolutely true, but it's starting to spread a lot. Yeah, what what will happen is if if somebody puts what what Pam Pam spoke to the USPS liaison and what they what they told us is that if someone puts a ballot into the mail, that it will be delivered to us, but then the county is going to end up having to pay the postage and that. So we'll end up getting a postage due bill after the election for all of the mail that is that that doesn't have postage. And I'm not sure how much it costs to mail a ballot, but it's got to be more than the 51 cents that right. for a regular piece of mail. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, hopefully they'll give us a discount, but. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a question if uh, everyone else has asked theirs. And that is that I understand from this discussion 
that there is no final decision about drop boxes. Am I correct? How many and where? Not that yet. All? Okay. Not yet. We're waiting on the libraries. Ralph, you want to speak up to that? Yes. Um, at this particular time, not yet, because we're waiting to see which libraries have 24 hours surveillance. If um, once we find that out, we can then begin to place them, um, setting up um, situations where we can start placing the boxes at that time. Do you have uh, an idea which you could pass on to us of ideally um, how many uh, drop boxes you would like to place if you've got all the connect connectivity for security or other things like that? I think we're kind of looking in the 12 to 16 range. That's that's what we're hoping for at the moment. They, um, they're pretty spendy boxes and hopefully we'll be able to get more than one use out of them, uh, more than one election out of them. Okay, um, thank you about that. Does this um, conclude item number four on our agenda? Mr. Wingate? I'm fine. Okay, Ms. Dr. Ruth, you're okay? All right, uh, let us move on to item number five, early voting locations. Okay, I, I sent uh, the board that the item, I sent you three, three different proposals. I'm recommending that we approve the four early voting locations, which was the first proposal, which would be using the South Annex, CT Martin, uh, Sandy Springs Library, whoops. Sandy Springs Library and Alpharetta Library. Now, I, I recognize that this is a major cutback from what we originally planned for the general primary, but that was before the pandemic, um, before the Secretary of State office decided to mail out absentee ballot applications to everyone. And that the, the response to that mailing has been um, well received as it seems as though if, if everyone returns the ballot that has requested one, we will have a higher turnout already uh, about 47 days out from the election uh, than we had for a turnout for the 2016 general primary, which I believe was 13.7%. So I think this, this number would already ha get us to 14%, um, still 48 days away. Um, you know, we've got, and uh, the reason why we're doing the cutbacks, of course, is because Fulton County has more than 2,000 confirmed cases of COVID. And as, as we, as has been documented, we've had uh, one staff um, fall ill to COVID and recover and uh, one that has passed away. And I think having one, one staff person, uh, one senior staff person go to the hospital and then another one pass away uh, it just makes me personally aware of my responsibility for the health and safety of the staff and the poll workers. Um, I think the other thing is, I think I sent you guys the article the other day with the with regard to the election in Wisconsin, which they've now, just the city of Milwaukee has tied um, seven infections in the Wisconsin election directly to, uh, to that election with six voters and a poll worker just in the city of Milwaukee were, were infected from that. Um, most of, many of our early voting workers are over 55. And of course, this demographic is, is more vulnerable than, than younger, um, younger members of the population and you know sending them into these risky situations if 
is is something that um, you know I take I take seriously. We've also got some libraries um, that are still undergoing renovation, such as Buckhead and Northside. Uh, other metro counties are also, from what I've read, considering similar scenarios where they are going to only open one location possibly for early voting. Uh, I think, you know, Cobb, I, from the last that I heard, DeCab hadn't determined what they were going to do. Cobb and Gwinnett were, were looking at one location each. And so I think if we have four um considering the and the way where we have them placed they'll be open for three weeks from 9 to 4 30 and that that one saturday between may 18th and june 5th and i think now public health is at the forefront we need to have convenient convenient voting which i think we have with ballot by mail we'll also have we'll supplement that with early voting and then we will have election day and we, we're gonna have to open all of our election day locations. So those, those will be available as well. The good news of course, is that the Secretary of State's office has uh, mailed all of those absentee ballot applications. And there is a way for the public to either drop them off for free. Uh, once we have those, those drop boxes placed and if they put them in the mail without postage those will get to us as well and i think it so at this point my recommendation is to go with those four locations for the the three weeks all right you have given us three proposals and i gather that your recommendation is that we approve proposal number one with four locations for uh, the entirety of early voting. Is that correct? Yes. Um, yeah, I went over that with with the the staff, the pertinent staff, and we we discussed that and feel that that's the the best the best option for us to go with. All right. Um, first of all. Uh, can I, well, we can do this in several ways, um, but we need, um, we can either have a motion for proposal one or two or three or something else, or just take them in turn and vote for them. What is the pleasure of the board? Well, I, I do have just a question that I, I'd like uh, Director Barron to address. And, and that is, and I totally understand the predicament we're in with um, COVID-19 with this pandemic. I just wanted to know if you could talk about your um, decision in, or were there any efforts to look at Buckhead locations? And I do know the constraints with the Buckhead Library being closed. And then we previously had those two polling locations that were in senior um, facilities that we can no longer use. But could you just talk about your efforts around looking at Buckhead potential polling places? Well, for early voting, we'll have, we'll have Buckhead locations for, for election day. But for early voting, uh, we usually would use the Buckhead Library, North uh, Northside Library, and Chastain Park. And Chastain Park is, um, although we, it could be available to us, our IT department does not recommend that we use that. We tried to get that hardwired in 2018, Good. and evidently the project did not get completed. Uh, there was some, there was some, some things happened with AT and T uh, and a contractor, and I don't know all the details, but we were under the assumption the project had been completed. But yeah. so if we use Chastain, it goes to Wi-Fi, and if we sign in, it goes straight straight out from from Wi-Fi just onto the internet. So our IT department said that is um, 
insecure, that's a very hard place to secure for mm -hmm. checking in voters. Um, so right now we have no good options in that area with uh, Northside and Buckhead under renovation. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's unfortunate because those two libraries, we had hoped that at least one of them would be available. But yeah. I think, I think the renovation schedule has been pushed back as well because of everything that's going on. Uh, Mr. Wingate, did you want to ask a question or make a comment? Well, no, I, I guess that, uh, you know, in terms of looking at this is that we're, we're operating under the uh, uh, lack of poll workers uh, during that period. We can, I mean, early voting, we can get early voting workers and then the county would do it. I mean, one of the, you know, one of the other things that we, those people are going to be, um, even though we're going to have masks for them, sneeze guards, sanitizer, uh, we, you know, we're going to be asking them to be. On the <laughs> we're going to be asking them. To, sorry, we're going to be asking them to be to do things that, um, you know, like us, us as staff. Um, a lot of us have young children, and most of us that I've, I've spoken with, we we wouldn't want to go out and work in those early voting locations and, and risk our own families for it. So we're going to be asking poll workers to do something that a lot of staff probably isn't willing to do. That's one of the reasons, another reason why we decided to recommend four locations. Um, and, and I just, I don't want to read or find out two weeks into this that somebody got infected because this virus does not sound fun to, to go through, as Mr. Jones can attest. Um, so, um, but we, we can get poll workers to staff it, and we're going to do a minimum number of poll workers so that because we're we're only going to allow up to if we have five poll workers only five a maximum of five voters will be allowed in at into the polling place as well so if we have very many very much in-person voting happen voters are probably going to have to wait in line just because of uh, the need to keep distance between between voters and poll workers and voters within the polling places. And, you know, uh, director, we have a, we have a fairly large uh, ballot as well. Yes. So it's not going to be yes, something. It is a, it is a long ballot. They're, they're in and out. So it's going to be a, it'll be kind of a uh, lined up process one would imagine under the circumstances. Yes. And we, we're going to have line managers at, at the locations. Um, yeah, you know, I've asked for guidance from the state as well. Uh, we have still, I still haven't heard back, but I've asked for guidance from the state as to what we're supposed to do if we have people, line manager notices anyone in line with symptoms. We've asked whether we can use those non-contact thermometers to test people for fevers. We, we haven't received any guidance from the state as to what we're supposed to do with people in line. Um, and so hopefully that will happen soon. Ms. Nuridin, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, I'll wait for Aaron, because he had his hand up first, I think. Well, my question is really quick. Did you get any guidance from the Fulton County Health Department as it relates to do you, if you have five poll workers, do you, is five a good number of people to have in, or as long as you can keep them six feet apart, or I know the number that they give is 10 people in a room at a time, but what I found is that when you talk to health experts, they have a different view on how things should go. So I'm just wondering, have we talked to the uh, health department? We have talked to the health department with regard to, you know, the, 
the PPE, the personal protective, um, like the masks, the sneeze guards, the, the sanitizers and those items. Um, we were just going with regard to spacing people out uh, in these rooms. Uh, we went with four locations that where we where we will be able to space out the the equipment and the voters to you know in order to allow for um, what we hear you know six feet between people but it just seems like in some of those locations uh, from what I've read sometimes, six feet depending on air conditioning isn't isn't enough so um that I mean, that's another consideration but we can consult with them as to whether um 10 is too many in some of those places if i may interject something from this morning's newspaper i read that gwinnett county is um uh taking three of their polling places um off the availability list because you can't get social distancing inside. And um, that's something we're all faced with. And now, sorry, Ms. Nuredin. Thank you so much. I, I, I was wondering, Rick, if you thought it would be possible, like, I don't know about the other three polling early vote sites, but in uh, CT Martin, is it possible to set up multiple rooms so we can have five people voting each time or is that just food for thought? For instance, the Cleveland Auditorium can hold 500 people or 250 people, let me get that straight, 250 people. That's the auditorium inside of C.T. Martin. And I was thinking if we close the partition, we can have two spaces. I'm just trying to think of ways to maximize the number of folks voting at one time, because I do know um, based on what I've been hearing by all accounts, we're going to start lessening these, um, opening up more businesses uh, as the weeks progress over the next couple of weeks. But like places like Walmart and in the stores, they're definitely letting more than 10 people come in at once and 10 people be in those big spaces at once. And I was kind of thinking trying to think of how we can apply that because we have a big space in CT. I don't know if it'll work for the other spaces to um, utilize more than one space inside since the facility will be closed to the public and we will be there to use it. Perhaps we can just maximize it. So instead of thinking we can maybe thinking we can only have five or five machines, maybe on the left side, we have five or six and on the right side, we have five or six. Just, just food for thought as you develop your strategy to get as many people in the polls that's healthy and reasonable yeah we can look at that because I, I i've only i've only was aware of the the one room out there that we use i didn't realize yeah what well, we used to use the auditorium i'm not sure what happened and then we started to use this small room on the side the game room if you will um that's on the other side of the pool but um, it's definitely, and I know Joe is on the line and he's a, a very strong um, proponent of um, our, our residents over in, in Adamsville. But uh, I just wanted to just, just food for thought as you surveil the place to see the best way we can do that. Uh, I'm thinking that we, we're gonna have some people who are gonna choose to, to, to distance socially, just self-preserve hopefully. But, um, you know, I just want the most number of people to be able to vote, you know, that, that's healthy and reasonable. All right. Um, what I would like to do at this time is ask for a motion, which does not require a vote immediately. But if we have a question um, okay. uh, before uh, we do so, Mr. Johnson, happy to hear it. Uh, I forgot. I'm, I'm sorry. My internet is going in and out. I've used my phone and the house and I don't know what's going on, but it's raining pretty. So anyway, really quick for just for clarity's sake, as one of the questions that I'm getting as it relates to early voting and even election day, uh, two things. Number one, and this may be a Blake question, I'm not sure, 
But if someone comes in and, you know, we're giving out, we're cleaning the machines, we're doing different things, and we appreciate that. But say someone, the question came, should we provide gloves for people to kind of help down? Or if people came in with gloves on, will they be able to have the gloves on and still use the touchscreen? I think the gloves are going to be fine for the touchscreen. We're going to use, we're going to employ styluses in so that we don't have to clean the machines down. So what we're going to do is sanitize the styluses. We're going to give stand styluses to the voters and let them use, because with the machines, we have to shut the machines down to clean them. So we would have to shut, we would have to shut the machine down every, after every voter and then wipe it down and then start it back up. So the styluses are gonna be the, really the only way uh, that, that will be efficient for us. And so I see if, if we use those, um, that's gonna work. Blake, do you wanna to add to that? No, I, I think you're right. Uh, if if uh, voters come in with gloves, they should be fine on the machine, um, but like Director Barron said, we plan on providing styluses because it's going to be a lot easier to just clean the styluses over and over again than the machines. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Dr. And Ruth, one last question. Excuse me, I'm going to convey something from Dr. Ruth. Can you order face shields for poll workers as well? Is that an option? Well, we could. We, yes. Oh, go ahead, Blake. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, so. Yes, we've already placed an order for some. Uh, we did get notification that um, about 650 of the face shields that we had ordered had been delayed um, with an uncertain delivery date. So we're working with uh, Dream with the county to make sure that we're able to acquire the number that we need. But we're, we're looking into face shields and, and hoping to be able to supply all the workers with, with face shields as well as masks. Well, we also are going to get the. There's a there's a company in Alpharetta that we're going to use um, to get uh, those sneeze guards. Like if you go into CVS now, they have a plastic shield up um, in between you and the the cashier, and you can slide things under it. And so we're we're planning on using those, uh, employing those at the early mm. notifications too when we check in. Mr. Johnson. Great. My, my last question was, can you speak to what people need to do if they get their absentee ballot, but then they come down, they decide that, as uh, Renetta mentioned earlier, things are starting to open up and they feel a little better about going to a facility and they want to vote in person. What they've already received their absentee ballot. Yeah, that that is a um, that's something that happens commonly as it as it is now. They can surrender that at the and at the polling place and vote on the machine if they'd rather do that. Okay. Okay. If they, do they have to have it, Rick, or will you guys be able to look it up and cancel it? Would they have to physically have it in their hand? Or will you be able to look it up and just cancel it at the poll? We can uh, we can look it up and uh, and cancel it. It just it takes a phone call to do that, and um, then there's there's an affidavit. So that's a that's a per, per procedure that we we do every election. So that's actually pretty commonplace for us to. I mean, not at this level. I mean, right. The more yeah. people that come in and do that. The, the more poll worker time it's going to take um, and to process that. So it's my recommendation that, um, you know, if you've, if you've applied for a ballot by mail, um, I would vote that way because if we get a lot of people in that are turning those in, that is, that is going to slow the lines down even more. Right. Before you got here, Rick, but I'm sure you heard about it. We had a issue in the department um, about, uh, it was before you got here, but the, the ballots, the absentee ballots went out really, really late and they had to be FedEx to the, to the voter. And um, 
I think what I'm concerned about is they may, maybe request a ballot and it hadn't come and they want to early vote or they want to go in and try to vote and they actually didn't get the physical ballot. Yeah. So they, I'm trying to, cause I know, trying to think, of, I know that that's gonna happen cause it's happened in the past. So and currently right now you said that it takes a phone call just to make sure that the person didn't actually send that in and trying to vote again. Is that what I heard you well, say? Well, we can can't, yeah, it, it can be can't at that point. So. That's okay, something so, that the poll okay. we've trained the poll workers to handle those situations as it is. Right. You said uh, something about a phone call. I'm sorry. Well, if if they don't have we basically what the, what the poll workers have to do is they have to call in and to registration so that they can they can cancel those um, they can cancel that and uh, if we receive that once once somebody votes if we receive that ballot afterwards then then we don't count the ballot we've got it we've got okay. it documented that they that they voted and that the ballot by mail has been canceled and what's going to be the advice to the poll managers on how to handle that situation you already guys have a you, you already have something in place right now I, yeah. just, I think yeah. whatever happened in the past is it may or may not apply here because we're just in uncharted territory if you will right. Well, it'll be the same procedures right. that we, we right. use. It's just that it could come in greater right. numbers. And the more people that do it, the, the longer it's going to take us to process those those voters. So my, my recommendation would be is if you would be to the voters, if you've requested an absentee ballot, um, just to help the process to help the smoothness of the process would be to, um, if you've received it, just to vote that way rather than to go to the polling place with it. But those procedures that that we have in place won't change uh, for this election because they're they're the same. We have to follow the same procedures that we always have. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, let me. Uh, ask that we get ready to consider the proposals, the recommendations and, and other proposals. We can handle this, it seems to me, in either of two ways. I can take a motion from anybody um, that we approve proposal one, two, or three, and we get a second on it. And the fact that you make the motion doesn't mean that you vote to approve it, but we have it on the table and then we dispose of that first. Or we can uh, uh, ask the board members to vote uh, sequentially, everybody who wants proposal one, then everybody who wants proposal two, and then everybody who wants proposal three. Um, uh, what is your pleasure? I would like to make a motion, Madam Chair, that we approve the director's recommendation for early vote sites, and that's option one. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. It's been properly moved and seconded that we approve proposal number one, which is four locations, South Annex, C.T. Martin, Sandy Springs, Library, Alpharetta Library, for all three, three weeks of early voting. Any discussion? Hearing none, um, all in, well, this is a, a substantive motion. Uh, hearing none, uh, Mr. Wingate, your vote? Aye. Uh, Ms. Newridden, your vote? Aye. Uh, Dr. Ruth, your vote? Aye. Um, Mr. Johnson, who has fallen off. Oh, there he is. Yes. Uh, you need to unmute. I, I missed the, I missed the uh, motion. You, okay. Uh, the motion on the table is to approve uh, proposal number one for, um, which is the recommendation of the director and staff for early voting locations. And I'm going through our votes one by one so that it's clear. Okay, aye. Aye. Uh, Ms. Cooney, aye. Uh, that is unanimous. And uh, thank you very much. We got that done nicely. Um, so that, takes care of item number five.
on our agenda. We already have item number six as amended, approved. That brings us to item number seven, the approval of amendment number one to the intergovernmental agreement for the city of Atlanta. Blake, we still haven't received the contract back, correct? It was received. Oh, it was, okay. Yes. And okay. That's, that's the one that we saw in our meeting packet. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and it's the same one we that we were gonna approve last time. However, we had to get the date changed. Okay, right. Okay, so um, I know that Mr. Webb is here in case we have any questions, but uh, are there questions? And hearing none, because we've already discussed this, do I have a motion? So moved. A motion to approve? Second. And, uh, and a second, any further discussion? All in favor, uh, uh, Mr. Wingate. Aye. Ms. Nuridin. Aye. Um, Dr. Ruth. Aye. Mr. Johnson. Aye. He's muted. He's, no, I heard him, Ms. Cooney, aye. Uh, that makes it unanimous. Aye. Thank you, and that takes care of that. Um, that brings us to item number eight, which is approval of precinct proposals. Mr. Evans, can you lead us through those? I can. So we, we do have several. The first five are going to be in regards to senior living facilities that have COVID-19 concerns. And then uh, the six after that are going to be schools that had conflicts uh, when we moved to the June date. And so we'll begin with proposal 120. The proposal is to move precinct 04K Abernathy Towers. Abernathy Towers cannot be a polling location for the near future due to COVID-19 concerns. And we're moving that to West Hunter Street Baptist Church. The next is proposal 520 which is precinct 07M in Brighton Gardens Buckhead. Brighton Gardens Buckhead has decided they cannot be a polling location for the near future due to COVID-19 concerns. We're proposing to move that to Cathedral of St. Philip. Next is precinct 08G, the Cathedral Towers. Cathedral Towers is unsure whether they can be a polling location for the near future due to COVID-19 concerns. We're proposing to move that to Cathedral of St. Philip as well. Next is Proposal 720, Precinct 09A, Marietta Road High Rise. They cannot be a polling location for the near future due to COVID-19 concerns. We're proposing to move that location to Northwest Library at Scott's Crossing. Next is proposal 820, Asbury Harris Epworth Towers. They are unsure whether they can be a polling location for the near future due to COVID-19 concerns. We're proposing to move that precinct, which, which is 11P, to William Walker Recreation Center. The next is proposal 1020, precinct JC09, Chattahoochee High School. The Fulton County School District has notified us that Chattahoochee High School is scheduled to undergo renovations in June. We're pro proposing to move that precinct to Taylor Road Middle School. Next is proposal 1120, JC11, State Bridge Crossing Elementary. The school district has notified us that, that school is scheduled to undergo renovations in June. We're proposing to move it to Johns Creek High School. Proposal 1220, ML04, Hopewell Middle School. School district has notified us that the middle school is scheduled to undergo renovations in June. 
We're proposing to move it to Cogburn Woods Elementary School. Proposal 1320, RW22A, Centennial High School. School district has notified us that Centennial High School is scheduled to undergo renovations in June. We're proposing to move it to Hillside Elementary School. Proposal 1420, Precinct SS26, North Springs High School. The school district has notified us that North Spring High School is scheduled to undergo renovations in June. We're proposing to move it to Woodland Elementary School. And then proposal 1520, which affects UCO1, A, B, D, and E, CH Golet Elementary School. That school is also scheduled to undergo renovations in June. We're proposing to move those precincts to Feldwood Elementary School. Do I have um, a motion on the entirety of these proposals and then we can take questions and comments? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Second been properly moved and seconded that we approve precinct proposals 120, 520, 620, 720, 820, 1020, 1120, 1220, 13, 14, 20, and 1520. Uh, any questions or concerns? I am hearing none and we have our motion to approve. Uh, and I'm going to ask for your votes. Mr. Wingate? Aye. Uh, Ms. Nuridin? Aye. Dr. Ruth? Aye. Mr. Johnson? Aye. Ms. Cooney? Aye. Uh, those all stand approved. Uh, let me comment and commend the Cathedral of St. Philip's, which has really stepped up uh, where we needed it in the Buckhead area to provide voting facilities. I'm most grateful. All right, uh, that brings us to the executive session portion of our meeting. Is there any member of the board that who wishes to go into executive session to discuss personnel or litigation matters? All right. And hearing none, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So move. So move. I second. Gotcha. And a second. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you all Thank very you. much. You um, at our next meeting, we will try for perfection. But <laughs> no, <we're> <laughs> thank you so much for <laughs> prevailing well, through all of our yeah, interruptions yeah. and lightning strikes and whatnot. Y'all yeah, yeah. stay safe out there. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Bye, you all. Thank Bye. You. Bye.